Hey everyone, this is Natasha and I'm back with my new video for Environment and Ecology Most Important Topics on Important International Conventions on Environment and Biodiversity. I particularly find it very hard to prepare this topic. The reason being it's very hard to collect information regarding each convention from different sources. Every time I hear something about any convention on the news, I go on reading and making notes on it from Wikipedia, convention's own website, etc. I'm sure you also face the same problem while preparing international conventions on environment and biodiversity. Plus, this topic is so much important that we cannot leave it uncovered as questions are definitely asked each year from this area. So I have made a compendium of like 34 most important conventions, which we'll cover in different parts. Okay, so we shall start now. So the first one is Ramsar Convention. It's an international treaty which aims at conservation and sustainable utilization of wetlands. So first of all, what are wetlands? Wetlands includes lakes and rivers, swamps and marshes, wet grasslands and peatlands, oases, estuaries, deltas and tidal flats. We also include human-made sites such as fish ponds, rice paddies, reservoirs and salt pans in the definition of wetlands. So, Ramsar Convention was signed in Ramsar, Iran in 1971. India is one of the 170 signatories to this convention. There are over 2300 Ramsar sites across the world and India currently has 27 Ramsar sites. Sundarbans Reserve Forest being the 27th one, which was declared a Ramsar site on 1st Feb 2019. The second one is Stockholm Declaration, which is a part of United Nations Conference on the Human Environment which paved the way for further understanding of global warming and which has led to such agreements as the Kyoto Protocol and Paris Agreement about which we learn in succeeding slides, right? So this is the first declaration of international protection of environment. It was held in Stockholm, Sweden in 1972, right? So one of the seminal issue that emerged from the conference is the recognition for poverty alleviation for protecting the environment. Right, Indira Gandhi attended it, and United Nations Environment Program, which is also known as UNEP, has been established by the United Nations General Assembly in pursuance of the Stockholm Conference. Okay, so now let's talk about United Nations Environment Program. It's a United Nations agency. And it covers a wide range of issues regarding the atmosphere, marine and terrestrial ecosystems, environmental governance and green economy. Founded as a result of Stockholm Conference headquarters, Nairobi, Kenya. And uh, several, uh, it is one of the several implementing agencies of Global Environment Facility and the Multilateral Fund for the Implementation of Montreal Protocol. Plus, International Cyanide Management Code which is a program of best practice for the chemicals used at gold mining operations, was developed under UNEP's ages. All right. The fourth one is CITES. Full form of CITES is Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Flora and Fauna. It is also known as Washington Convention. It is legally binding on parties, but it doesn't mean that it will take the place of national laws, right? And it was open for signature in 1975. Uh, 182 states and the European Union are parties to this convention. Its aim is to protect endangered plants and animals, as is obvious from its name, right? The fifth one is Nairobi Declaration. It was adopted in 1982. And this declaration was held in order to create a special commission which could frame environment strategies for achieving sustainable developments up to the year 2000 and beyond. So the declaration was endorsed by the Governing Council of United Nations Environment Programme in 1987. All right, so the sixth one is Vienna Convention. Very important. It's a multilateral environment agreement for the protection of ozone layer. 
opened for signature in 1985 and entered into force in 1988. It's a un universal convention, which means there are 197 ratifiers to this convention. And it doesn't include legally binding reduction goals for the use of CFCs, which are the main chemical agents causing ozone deplet uh, depletion. But these are laid out in the accompanying Montreal Protocol. Okay, so now let's talk about Montreal Protocol. It's an international treaty again, which aims to protect the ozone layer by phasing out the production of numerous substances that are responsible for ozone depletion. Okay, it came into force in 1989. This is also a universal protocol, just like Vienna Convention. It is legally binding. So this treaty is structured around several groups of halogenated hydrocarbons that have been shown to play a role in ozone depletion. And all of these substances contain either chlorine or bromine. See, substances containing only fluorine do not harm the ozone layer. And it aims at phasing out chlorofluorocarbons and hydrofluorocarbons. See, hydrofluorocarbons are being considered to be included under it. HFCs hasn't been included under it yet. See, HFCs do not harm ozone but are harmful as a greenhouse gas. The eighth one is Brundtland Report. It was formally called Our Common Future Report of the World Commission on Environment and Development. It came into being in 1987 and this report for the first time gave the concept of sustainable development. We all know what sustainable development is. It is the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The ninth one is IPCC, that is Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It's an intergovernmental body under the United Nations. It's a scientific body, which means that it produces report based on scientific developments across the world. It was formed in 1988 by World Meteorological Organization and United Nations Environment Program. So it bases its assessment on the published literature. It was also awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2007. It functions under United Nations Framework on Climate Change. We'll talk about it later. And the aims of IPCC are to assess scientific information relevant to human-induced climate change, the impact of human-induced climate change, and options for adaptation and mitigation. All right, so the 10th one is Basel Convention. This is the last one for this video. It was formally called the Basel Convention on the, on the control of transboundary movements of hazardous wastes and their disposal. It's a United Nations Treaty. It was open for signature in 1989. It was effective from 1992. There are 53 signatories to this convention, but 187 parties, right? So its aim is to reduce the movement of hazardous waste between nations and specifically to prevent transfer of hazardous waste from developed to less developed countries. All right. So guys, the first part of this video ends here. I'll come up with the next part soon. Till then, enjoy learning and work hard. And please do like and share this video. Thank you.